Me and Artemis Benedict gonna save Gordon Ramsay from a big metal spider. Wiki what a fresh chef from the west side. Damien, I've done it. I've done it. I've done the Ramsay bit. What do you want to talk okay, about? Okay, cool. Oh, well, I... Uh, <coughs> oh, man. Oh, I'm sorry, please. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think I've, I've just cacked in my pants. It's, it, it sounded like something large had come out of your nose. Not my nose, but something large has just come out of me, yes. Your boyfriend. Aha. Uh -huh. I see what you did there. That was a that was a gay joke. It's very funny. Okay, we'll do that again. Um, and you do the exact same thing when I say your boyfriend. Your boyfriend. Aha. Uh -huh. I see what you did there. No, no, no. Just the aha. Uh -huh. Your boyfriend. Aha. Uh -huh. Da, da, da. <laughs> da, da, da. Aha. Artemis Bennett has a boyfriend. Aha. Uh -huh. It's not a gauge. It's not a gay joke. It's a joke about you getting a dick taken out of your ass. <laughs> I mean, you know, not necessarily consensual. You know, no, maybe not, it, maybe you, not be in, you could you could quite clearly be be two straight men who are just in prison together. Well, I suppose it's almost in line, but yeah, it's not. not it's not necessarily symptomatic of um, a consensual thing, or you know, in the, symptomatic of a lifestyle. It could be. It could be non-consensual. This could be a very dire situation where I require help and at the very least a lot of sympathy right now yeah i'm very sorry you were raped <laughs> that's how we should start every podcast <laughs> so the little, kind of like disclaimer at the beginning of every episode so for anyone that, that you know may have suffered such troubles we are very sorry to hear th 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 these fates have befallen you anyway sorry you were raped good <laughs> moving on what sort of humor does this podcast have it's the sort of humor where we say prison rape is really quite horrible when you think about it because it's so endemic it's awful yeah anyway gordon <laughs> ramsay lol <laughs> wiki wiki wah wah ramsay you've been really you've been brushing up on your fucking rhyming i see i'm rapping i'm rapping menage a toi menage a toi with gordon yeah oh my god <laughs> it's, it's, it's bilingual oh i see so no, oh yeah you see yeah okay oh my god mine's exploding right now uh, so, uh, ideas for Gordon Ramsay, the movie. Obviously, there's the wiki w Wild Wild West stuff. Also, Gordon Ramsay visits a restaurant run by the Adams family. Da -da -da -dun. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay, was that... My I, I can't click my fingers, so I just go click, click or something. You can't click your fingers. Why, well, Why can't you click uh, your fingers? That's, they're too rubbery. They're too rubbery? What's, yeah, yeah, yeah. What does that mean? All this, all day, every day, I'm, ha you know, I'm handling fish, and they're just covered with fish oil, and it's just like what? That's not rubbery. That's oily. Uh, well, that, that, that's my point. You know, it's gotten to a point where my skin is kind of so saturated with it, it doesn't have this oily sheen anymore. They just, but it has like such a poor coefficient for friction now, so I can't really. I've not only do I have trouble gripping things, but as I say, even like more minor things like clicking my fingers are just something that I can't. I, I, I can no longer attain. Every week you find a new way to be disgusting. <laughs> Which brings me on to my next idea for Gordon Ramsay, the movie. Unless you want to talk about the Adams family running a restaurant. Uh, I, I, I'm kind of in a bit of a shame and a bit of a shame spiral having confessed my, well, my... my, my Your oiliness. The, yeah, I suppose so. Well, I don't know. You you could perhaps mess about with Ramsey in a new film, Gordon Ramsay, Find the Spunk. Uh, Where well, every time I see him in a hotel, he's always looking for cum. Right. Precisely. This is madness. <laughs> All right. So what have you been watching where Gordon Ramsay has been like, Traipsing through motels with a fucking black light because well, I haven't seen that, any of that. All that hotel hell stuff he did. He, I think he only did two or three seasons. But every hotel room he goes into, he gets out a black light, and he's like, "Oh my god, look at all the cum everywhere! It's almost like this room's been used by a thousand people." That's how he speaks. <laughs> is he so? Like, I don't. Your your inflection there is is kind of neither here nor there. Is he impressed or is he disappointed? Is he excited that you know it it is in this? unfortunate state or is he disappointed you know or is or does he have like a normal human reaction he's, so you mean he's, he's, exci he's excited not because the room is covered in cum but because that is good television <laughs> well i mean maybe that's his angle yeah well you know that's, that's you know, the, the cover inner workings right there but i so I, all right so i think your answer it's is like Julian Ju 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 McKeith. she's like yeah i'll i'll become a nutritionist yeah 
that'll be my beard, so no one knows that I'm just into shit. <laughs> I suppose I should say Gillian McKeith, if you're not from Britain or you're you're under 20 or you've just got a life. Uh, Gillian McKeith was a kind of famous TV personality whose gimmick was literally she would look through the shit of people she had on her show and assess their diet from that. And, say, and and she would say to people, yeah, your shit tells me that you shouldn't eat 12 burgers a day. Whereas most people, most people can just do that from a form. My, your shit is telling me that you shouldn't shit while you're eating. You shouldn't eat while you're shitting. Oh, oh fucking hell. I've just kind of like reminded myself uh, of who this person is as well. What a disgusting human being. Gillian McKeith, yeah. Same age as Nigella Lawson. Well, I'm sure if you find the right picture, Nigella Lawson also looks like she's melting as well. But this is kind. Of, this is quite extreme. I mean, maybe maybe that's what being strangled by Charles Sarchi does to you. <laughs> was it Charles Sarchi? Yeah, I think, well, I think I think it was Charles Sarchi. That was big, wasn't it? When that happened. Oh, nom 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 nosh nosh nosh. That's Nigella Lawson. <laughs> she loves food, didn't it? Oi, come here, you slag. Drop him. Yeah, after Charles Archie strangled her, she's been in the gym. She's like 300 well, pounds, no, I mean, but it's I mean, not that's, fat. It's not, it's not fat. That's, you know, that's the state of her vocal cords now, surely, after the strangulation. Her vocal cords are so strong because she's been working them out. <laughs> she's just going to break his head on her knee. <laughs> just goes in for primal scream therapy. Like her, you know, she has this plan for revenge that she's literally just going to like shout straight in his ear and hope that it fractures his skull from the inside out. Which, albeit, is, you know, I would I imagine, if possible, quite a satisfying revenge. How, how are we talking about this? I don't suppose Nigella Lawson is connected to Gordon Ramsay. Oh, that's a first. <laughs> <laughs> So it's not entirely, you know, tangential. Maybe we're losing our ability to talk out of bollocks. Maybe, yeah, right. Yeah, this yeah. is, yeah, this is, yeah. So, yeah, I, yeah, I see what you're saying. There. I mean, this is almost, yeah, we are losing our edge because that was borderline coherent. Anyway, you, 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 you would, what you were trying to do was you were answering my question. Like, so Gordon Ramsay is storming, uh, was storming this, uh, these hotel rooms one after the other with this, you know, this kind of black light. Yeah, he was, he was searching for cum, you know, and. Yes. Upon discovery, you didn't kind of elaborate. Was he happy or sad? Uh, so Gordon Ramsay's exact emotion was, "Oh blimey, lots of cam! Oh no, that's not on! Oh lovely, lovely cam makes great television!" <laughs> that's, that was his emotion. It was very nuanced, <laughs> but there, but there was the, yeah, there was there was no cut at all. So everything was left in the in, oh, in no, the and, shot. There and the second bit, he, it's not like he said that to himself. It's not like he you know put his hand in front of his mouth. Even he just said it all. <laughs> in the second shot where they, he was told it was you know it was off camera yeah because he like puts the he puts the black light down he pop, pops in next to the television he unzips his uh his uh, his jacket because I, I presume you know he's not gonna be in his whites there that's ridiculous he's you know he'll be there in his like leather jacket or whatever he unzips it a little bit reaches into his breast pocket produces from there his tasting spoon Right, it's only like a teaspoon. It's in the shape of a banana, see. though. It's a, it's, it's like a Curious George novelty tasting spoon. Like it's from, it looks ridiculous, but it's from the fifties. It's vintage. It's worth quite a bit. No, 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 no. This there. is like from the early nineties. You got it free with a magazine. Okay, with a magazine yeah, that's careful. all about cereal. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the, 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 I remember you could get shit like that in, yeah, in cereal boxes. Some of them, maybe, yeah, maybe it's one of those ones that was also a straw as well. So no, 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 done. it was one of those in the shape of Frankenstein. And it was, in the, it was in like an embossed Frankenstein. So it was like really kind of not pleasant to eat with that turns from a fucking, from puke orange to puke green when you put it in milk. <laughs> oh, I remember this, yeah. And it's like it's a, they drop the, they, they cut the lights, you know. And they really fucking do it because the fucking spoon glows in the dark as and well. And goes, so wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Like, it's not, it's not detecting anything. It's just some dub. <laughs> you turn the lights off, dubstep comes out of it. It's remarkable that such technology came to pass at, uh, in the, uh, the mid-90s. Such pointless technology. You would have thought they would have kind of implemented it, uh, they'd find better ways to implement it at the time, but, you know, obviously they just kind of sat on it for almost 15 years. Oh, uh, that's because of all the Roswell stuff, isn't it? Mm, think about it. Naturally. Yeah. There's an alien who's changed my siding. 
<laughs> it wasn't the landlady who, who told me that if I don't get my fucking dilapidated piece of shit box house in order, I'll be evicted. No, she took matters in her own. This couldn't possibly have been that. No, no, no. Obviously, extraterrestrial activity. Or did he do two series about hotels? I don't know. I haven't seen them. I'm, I'm, I'm bound to your knowledge at this point. Yeah, I've watched I don't know. I mean, I feel like if he was searching for cum, it wouldn't have been so short-lived. Is it like maybe a more modern thing and they're, they, you know, they're still rolling with it and they're just yet to produce it? Because I think, you know, because it sounds like searching for cum is like the crux of this TV show. It's just they had, they've had to, like, they wanted to make this right. show. They knew it was going to get into it, but they had to kind of, they couldn't really get it, they couldn't really push it through if they're going to be like Gordon Ramsay <laughs> looks for cum, right? <laughs> so they had to kind of develop this, like, pretense, albeit very flimsy. Like, yeah, he's in a hotel. Like, Gordon Ramsay is in a hotel. That's what they put on the poster, but you know, because they got the poster, right? And he's reaching into that breast pocket. He's getting out that fucking, he's bringing out that fucking spoon. You know, you're not quite sure why. You've got your, you've got your hopes, right? But it's not entirely gone. But you tune in, you find out, and it delivers everything you fucking expected. It's got nothing to do with the hotels, other than the fact that he's physically in these hotels. Okay, so, but it's not, it's, what I want to get across as well is, it's not just cum, right? It's, it's, but, it's, but. <laughs> There's fecal matter as well. It's, I mean, it's we don't want to limit ourselves. It's the way they say it is: it's bodily fluids, and and like then they look at like a bed sheet that is covered in bodily fluids, and no one's going. I'll call the police. There must have been a murder. No, because it's fucking cum. <laughs> Right, like so. It's, it's not like he and walks into a that, fucking rest. He walks into a fucking hotel room, and there's like all these marks on the wall, and, and the owner's like, "Yeah, that'll be from the guy last year who shit everywhere." No, it's it's people <laughs> coming on each other and doing things like that. But it's it's all it's all kind of dried and brown. Maybe it's it's, it's like dried blood. No, so like no, no. We had a bit of a trouble with this guest. We found him like shitting into the kettle and boiling his turds. And there's two things I wanted to bring up as well. You've just reminded me of that. Okay, good callback on Steve there, shitting into his kettle. <laughs> but but what a lot of our listeners might not know is uh, Damien is a chef, cook. Damien cooks. He's a dinner lady. In fact, Damien has even cooked for Michael Caine and Buzz Aldrin. Right? That, that, is, that, that is true. Yes. That is true. That is they tr- both like their liver, liver and onions. That, that is true. Damien has cooked for both of those people, but also perhaps the most fascinating story Damien tells is when you worked in a sushi restaurant and a gentleman came in for a very early dinner. <sighs> so yeah, I, I, I worked very briefly at the start of my career. Well, I, wasn't, I was just a waiter at that point. I worked in this uh, sushi bar and we got this guy um, straight at first doors. It's like the second we opened, you know, we... You, yeah, turn the sign around. He and was, was like no, straight through the. There was no one else in there, right? No, no, no. We didn't. I mean, we didn't have any like anything on the books for like an hour or so. You know, it was it was set to be quite a quiet evening, um, but this guy was like straight through, kind of nothing. And you know, he immediately like sits down and orders his food. He he gets up. And he just kind of vanishes to the bathroom. Um, and I've seen. We had a few people. That would come in um, just off the street, reckoning they can just go straight to the bathroom, and so and then. You know, everyone kind of blocks them. Now, if you're going to use the bathroom, you have to be a paying customer. I think this guy was kind of familiar with that. Um, um, he looked like he was obviously like a middle class chap, quite quite polite. So I think he was. It's not like he's tried his luck before and he's been denied or anything like that. But you know, I think he he knew. So he, he to save face, he puts his you know puts his order in. I think, I'm sure he was originally quite prepared to sit and eat his food afterwards. Yeah, he, he was in there for like suspiciously long amount, suspiciously long amount of time because as he's, I mean, I know, granted, you know, there's nothing else on the docket. So, which, you know, we, which is what? Which, how long? I'd say like 15 minutes at this point. It's quite long to spend in a restaurant in a bathroom. bathroom. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we were all kind of, uh, a couple of us were kind of like getting suspicious. I thought maybe oh, we're kind of like, Maybe thinking about what could what could be going on. Maybe like maybe maybe he's maybe he's racking up or something. I don't know. Maybe he's doing something in there. It's not. It's kind of a little bit weird. Um, uh-huh. We so didn't think to knock on the door or anything like that. Um, but we left into it, and it was like another like f- five to ten minutes afterwards because his food was sat there just just congealing. Right. Um, and he he gets out. You know, we finally hear like this, this eponymous flush, um, and he kind of like <laughs> okay. gets out like looking at the fucking floor. He doesn't make eye contact with anyone and just bolts out um and like, well, like he, actually little... run, he actually runs yeah he doesn't run but he is you know um he is he's walking at a very brisk pace 
and he just he wants to get out there. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, I was kind of like far assing around at this point. All I when I realized, I see like the little manager lady like trying to chase him down the street, going blah 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 blah. You, you need you must pay this that and the other, um, which in and of itself um, was funny because she was this tiny tiny like eighty year old woman. Yeah, so we kind of had to kind of investigate, and it kind of fell to me um, to kind of see what was going on. Shit, and so Master I checked Damien. The lo- yes, yeah, yeah. Well, they they knew my lot in that fucking place. I was I was the guy that scrubbed the fucking toilet. So I go in just to see if if, if he's left anything behind or something happened. But it was un fucking real. Um, it was just it was liquid shit everywhere. <laughs> I mean, I've and I've like wallpapered, had, Damien. You said wallpapered with shit. <laughs> The, the only way I can Im- imagine it in my head was if he was, if he had kind of like perched over the toilet and he had like pressed his, ch- you know, he's got his kind of feet either side of the toilet and he's like, he's decided to press his cheek, you know, his, his cheek, or, you know, his face yeah. to the floor in between his feet and he's just got his ass in the air and he just fucking gives it everything he's got. Cause <laughs> it's, I, don't, I don't understand how, I don't understand the physics here. I, I can't figure it out. I don't know why I didn't get a photo record of it. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Didn't you used to have regular Sunday dinners with someone who would take photos of their own shit and send them to you while you're eating? Did, <sighs> wasn't that you? No, that wasn't me. But I knew people that would. Uh, there was a guy that I yeah a, a long time ago used to have Sunday dinners with, but he wouldn't send like stuff like that to me. He would just cut. He was doing it to harass one of his friends, right? But at the same time, you know, he would like. He'd be very vocal um, about what he was doing as he was doing it, and obviously the inference being is that he obviously just got back from the fucking toilet. So he's do- he's blasting these fucking battle shits out <laughs> oh, no. in 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 my fucking toilet, and it's like, oh yeah, fine. And he's just showing me as he's doing it. Granted, I was yeah, I was never the recipient, which is fine. I would have taken. I mean, I, sh- I took objection anyway. I didn't want to see what his fucking shit looked like. No. Yeah, uh, just as a very quick tangent, I've been. Look- I actually took notes for this episode for the first time in about thirty episodes, and um, one of my obviously I was in a slightly different state of mind when I took the notes because one of the notes says it just says Menage a Trout. <laughs> Can you elaborate that? On, no, by any chance? I cannot elaborate on that at all. <laughs> I don't know why I I wrote that. I even actually corrected the spelling. So, because <laughs> I rem- it obviously it goes without saying that I was obviously I was shit faced at the time, but you know as the evening was coming to a close, I had a quick review. I didn't want to lose any of this golden material, and I had to kind of yeah <laughs> right. spell check myself. I would want to look look back at this in the morning. And I, I, I I feel quite the fool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it won't, if I can't read that it says trout instead of toi, then it won't make any sense. <laughs> I also wrote down a. Um, a little Gordon Ramsay fact here. Uh, Gordon Ramsay is afraid of snakes, but has two pet snakes because the life, he says, is for living. Mm. So, I think that's the Parkinson music I hear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, 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 that's, a, that's, a, that's a baffling quote. So, it's, so he's got these pet snakes and life is for living. So I, I take it like the fear and, and the, the adrenaline you know, that comes with that, 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 that makes you feel alive. So, right. So Ramsey has these snakes. Does he keep them? Well, um, the article, like, the article or is I got just this kind from, of like the article I got this from is the only time I've ever seen Gordon Ramsay look scared because it was a photo of him and one of his snakes. It was uh, like a kind of like it's a, like a thirty foot anaconda. It was like a creamy coloured one. You know, one that's ever so slightly <laughs> orange. <laughs> like, and it was around his neck. And he looked terrified, and it's like, oh, yeah, and they're mine. I own the snakes. <laughs> These are the demons that I live with. <laughs> yeah. I'm frightened of them. They can sense fear, and they know it. And every day, they become more powerful. <laughs> I love it. Well, yeah, then yeah, they're not kept adrenaline. in cages. Like, well, yeah, Ramsey is obviously very well to do with his, with his, you know, his empire. So he lives in a, a you know, a veritable estate, you know. It's m- massive, 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 massive house. Um, he only has the two snakes, but you know, one condition. Uh, I can't know quite what the, every know, room has a be. snake hole. <laughs> the snakes only have access snakes. to everywhere. You know, there's, there's acres. You know, there's acres. He he can go like weeks without seeing them, but they are nevertheless allowed to roam free. I'll tell you what the name of the snakes are if oh. you want. 
<laughs> All right, you're gonna you're gonna love this. The two two okay. snakes. One one's like a, a creamy, with kind of like orange, but very light orangey spots. It almost looks like it's one color. And the other one's black. It's cool. The other one's black and red. And the orange one's called jambalaya, and the black and red one's called gumbo. Ah. Oh. Oh, that's, I was I was hoping the creamy one was going to be called creamy goodness, naturally. All right, well let's do it again then. Okay, so the creamy one with the orange spots on it, but it almost looks like it's the same color. That one's called creamy goodness. <laughs> <laughs> the other one with black and red stripe is called Tarquin. I know. Would you even give a snake a name? I, I've known people who've like owned mice before as pets, and I don't think they named them. Oh really? Yeah, because the yeah mice have babies very quickly, don't they, and all that. I imagine quite a short lifespan as well. Yeah, I imagine so. Seconds, mm. if you know, you're a twelve-year-old boy who likes to squeeze things. Um, yeah. So, Gordon Ramsay, the movie. Come on, Damien, let's hear your ideas. Or we could talk about cooking with spunk. Oh yes. Okay. So um... <laughs> it's such an easy choice. <laughs> I can't well yeah you don't ask me to kind of pitch movies can't do that I've got no head for that but to, cooking with sperm fucking forget about it alright let me get my fucking notes so you floated this idea a while yeah, back yeah there was there was something that I kind of discovered a while back and I was going to bring this up I just never found the right opportunity opportunity uh, to and it's a book um, I don't know how well known it is like, I don't know how it found its way to me but it's a it's a cookbook and it's called uh, it's called natural harvest because other harvests aren't natural. Yeah, um, and so you've you've immediately got um, oh, on the cover you've got this it is this picture of this wonderful little like creme caramel like blancmange thing you know sitting so on a plate it's on a nice thatched tablecloth it looks homey it looks inviting it looks delicious um and you've got yeah nice earthy tones in the in the cover all this that and the other it's obviously a lovely summer's afternoon when they've done it and blah 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 and so yeah you've got natural harvest and then you've got the subtitle a collection of semen based recipes it is essentially a, a collection of very basic recipes where they've just thrown in one special ingredient every single fucking time. Now, there's one like baffling But is it okay so oh, all right this is my question is this cooking normally and i'll come in it or is this substituting something with cum well no it, that, that see that that is it i mean i thought maybe there was something to it but no it is just a list of regular recipes that you eventually just like find time to just jizz in right but it's like, okay so there's no actual culinary reason for i mean god no it's just one of these like new kind of agey things like oh i think it's maybe kind of uh, I, 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 I thought at first it was like aimed at like vegans and stuff like that. It's kind of like some kind of, um, like protein substitute, but they 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 do a lot of like um, pastry in here, and that you know they use a lot of dairy and stuff like that. No, it's just I think it's just a new agey thing that's that's kind of like that talks about like the benefits of eating one's own jizz or so I could I, I could make anything with this then it because it's not like oh no cum doesn't work in that recipe. It's just you. Stroganoff, cum, meatballs, yep. cum, ice cream, cum, whatever. It doesn't have to lend itself to cream or anything. No, absolutely not. I mean, uh, well, this is just. Well, I don't know what to say. Then this is just clearly degenerate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know. But, uh, can I ask? But you, it's, okay, it's, here's a question for you. If I baked a cake that I came in, and I gave it to someone without telling them, is that assault? Because I would be pretty fucking mad. I would be fucking furious. No, that there is no way. There's no way that wouldn't that that wouldn't. Yeah, that that that. I mean, that's obviously on that kind of spectrum. I think we touched on when we were talking about Spacey when it comes to sexual assault. This would be one of the kind of you would call it minor, but it would still be a violation if it you know if it really happened. If someone like inadvertently oh, yeah, yeah. fed me their own jizz, no, I would I would not I would not be on board with that. See, I'm all right with tip milk. <laughs> but, so what, what's the difference there hmm, i wonder i don't know but there are a couple of things about it's, it's very coy this book it seems to kind of really 
I wasn't, yeah, it, it really needs to kind of ingratiate itself um, because it's obviously quite repellent on a bass level. Now, one of the things that I, I noticed immediately, which kind of tickled me, is that they list the, the author on the cover. It's a man called uh, Paul Fotenhauer. <laughs> and what they've done is, uh, I, I don't know if the author, you know, uh, insisted on this or it was the publisher trying to make this more likable um, They've listed his nickname in a, you know, uh, when they've uh, they put his name there. So you've got Paul <laughs> Foti Fotenhauer. And it's just... Uh, I don't, uh, That's not the nickname I thought you were going to say. Oh, no, it's, it's, nothing, it's nothing crude or anything like that. But I think it's, just, it's, 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 just, it's, it's, it's this peculiar embellishment. I don't, I'm not quite sure what the angle was. Was it the... As I say, it's, is it the author trying to be kind of friendly and kind of bouncy and fun and like, hey, check me out? Or is it just the public just being like, we have to make... We have to <laughs> make this kind of... But if presentable on any kind of level, it's weird that they did that. But it's also the least weird thing that's going on. Yes, yeah, yeah. And I've got, I've, I've got a couple of the fucking recipes up here, and and uh. well, sure, but it's just like you know, apple pie. Come, I, I don't understand who who is, this is for because surely if you're into come, you're just in, like, and you you're into come on food, you just want some come on food, not. Like you know, so it's invisible and tasteless, and yeah. I mean, why, why you know, if you, if you want to kind of you know get off on eating food that has come in it, why not just be like, I'll pretend that this food has come in it. Why go to the fucking effort? There are a lot of bizarre food trends out there, and I think they were just kind of yeah, but I wouldn't call to... I wouldn't call this a food trend. I'd call this a fetish thing, isn't it? I mean, how's it presented? It's presented like a, just an average cookbook. It's presented quite elegantly. Really, I mean, there's no the pictures of like people coming in mixing bowls. No, nothing like that. It's all listed quite, you know, um, yeah, it's all listed very elegantly, very what? in a very kind of standard format for what a do, uh, cookbook. What, what do they call like, the, the cum? pictures? What do they call the cum? Um, they call it semen in when they uh, when they put when they list the ingredients. But some of like the they, they they're being coy again with like the titles of some of these recipes, and one of them is uh, they've got crepes, which uh, which filled with like cream cheese, and they just call it creamy cum crepes. So you've got alliteration there, it, you know, rolls off the tongue. That's going to stay in your head. Creamy cum. Crepes. So, but and, and like that is basically just make some pancakes with all the like standard ingredients, and then when you're making your mix of like cream cheese, you know, fold in fold in the sugar first, and then finally fold in some jizz. Then put that in the pancake, roll it up. That's it. And it's stuff like that, but there's one in particular which, like, completely ruined me, right? <laughs> well, you didn't have to make these things. <laughs> when you say it ruined, ruined me, why did it call for half a pint? No, 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 no. I'll, I'll get to it in a second. There, there, there is one thing, because when it, it, it has, like, this little asides, um, uh, when it before it kind of, like, goes into the recipe, like, how to kind of use it, what to expect, like, dinner parties and stuff like that. It's, that's fucking mind-blowing that you would kind of expect to do that. But if you were going to do this on that kind of level, I, it, you would ha I don't know how you would get the, enough jizz for, for, for these, these recipes. It's, it's kind of... Unless you... It's kind of like, you, you know... You know how you'd get BYOJ, you know, bring your own jizz. We kind of... You've got other people kind of contributing. It's kind of... It's a it's a tough order to fill, but no, there's one there's one recipe. Everything is as we say. It's it's just a regular standard recipe, and then just throw some jizz in at the end. There's one thing, right? And they've all got like coy titles. One of them is like so, slightly saltier caviar, and it's just caviar that you you come on, right? But there's one. It's it's fucking that, disgusting, that's, that and it's called grim. Yeah, no, this 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 is it, right? Because I used to be a fan of this food, and I can never do it. I can never go near it again. Oh, hang on, let me uh, guess. Turkish Delight. No, 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 no. Okay, no. let me guess. Uh, Where there's originals? No, 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 no. Okay, let me candy. guess. Blamange. Blamange, not a, bl not a pastry, not a sweet. Sausage roll. No, again, we're dealing with jizz here, so it's something that's going to be slightly salty. Pork pie. No, 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 no. Uh, salt lick. Something Think, that's uh, gazpacho soup. Think seafood. Sturgeon. <laughs> Lobster. Keep, keep going. Lobster. No, 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 no. Shrimp. No, 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 no. Calamari. No. All right, you keep... You, you, you Mussels. Keep Oysters. Right. Oysters? Oysters, yes. Oysters, that's it. All right? Oh. All right and this is it. It's called, it's called man-made oysters, right? And the, this, uh, unlike everything else in this fucking book, has a recipe. 
this simply has a, a few simple <laughs> instructions. This says right? come on the oysters. All it is is like no, 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 no. Like the it's got a, this pretense here. It's like when you have oysters that are you know keep the shells and we can use them later on. And basically all this is is like if you've kept your oyster shells, simply come in them and serve them up. The, the, Semen itself has a texture and taste similar to that of an oyster. Uh, and that's it. There's, no, there's nothing. It's not like you're not jizzing on the You're simply like coming in an oyster shell and then asking someone to drink from that shell. And uh, I, uh, I, I, can, I, I, I can never do that again. I, I, I can, uh, yeah, I'll never, I'll never enjoy oysters ever again. I, I'm going to say that um, I'm going to say no to all of this. Just, no. just no. Just, <laughs> it's a five-minute podcast. We don't include any of this, and I wouldn't. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be upset with that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be disappointed. Okay. <laughs> um. Well. Okay. Well. Well. Let's jump back into Ramsey going around a hotel room looking for cum, because I think that's where the best chance of a movie lays. All right. Okay. Uh, as soon as you know, you didn't want to take out the Adams family thing. Although the Adams, I'm sure the Adams, they're weird. They'd probably come in things. Maybe. I mean, I, I guess the, we only saw the kind of more family-friendly side, but, you know, as time goes on, those kids grow up, you know. I mean, the parents themselves will, you know, will have their baggage. They'll have their, you know, their quirks and what have you. But, well, uh, they're kinky. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Lord knows, Lord knows what they, what they, what they, what they, what they those fuckers are doing. Yeah. With that thing. I wouldn't see Ramsey at the uh, at the Adams estate with a black light. Gordon Ramsey uses a phone box to travel back in time to the Adams family times, where he has a black light. Do you know that um, another little fact about Gordon Ramsey? Gordon Ramsey actually ha- only has two taste buds, but they're very well developed. One is umami, and the other one is dog shit. <laughs> I feel like this is this could be like a personal quote. We were talking about the Adams family of probably just in things. Is that what we were saying? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know quite what the pretense is that you know the that Ramsey ends up at the residence. Maybe you know he travels so back and so far back. They've in got time. a restaurant and it's not doing very well. <laughs> God, it's, you know, yeah, fucking why is he at the house? Is it something they kind of do on their front it, porch? It's like a pop up thing. He, well, he's at he's at their house because. No, he was at their house. He busts out the fucking like black light, and it's everywhere. Everywhere you look, it's dripping off the fucking ceilings. But it's I, not like so much like a black light. It's something like like a magic torch. You can't see it until he thinks. And as soon as you do, it's just like there's jizz everywhere. Like when he as soon I as he busts it out and he exposes it, the door slams shut. It's like glued, right? It's glued shut by all this fucking jizz. Who, like, maybe there could be like. It's kind of like a mystery as to whose jizz it is. Maybe it's an amalgam of all the family. But after that, it becomes like, how is Ramsey going to escape from this mansion? Well, okay. Well, maybe. But I think first, we've got to establish, right? The restaurant is in their house. And the first thing Gordon Ramsay can say is he can try their food and he can be disgusted and all of that. And he can be like, right, well, you know, the food was disgusting. But that's okay. I'm Gordon Ramsay. But <laughs> one problem that is going to be hard to solve is that your house is 250 feet away from the pavement. And it's just, it's never addressed. There's nothing they can do about it. It's just no one's going to go to this fucking restaurant, no matter how good it is, because they have to walk like four minutes up this drive. (laughs) One um, Ramsey thing he did in Britain, and it was like they had a restaurant, and his his whole plan was stop being shit, and you know, open the restaurant up. You're on, you're in Brighton. Open up the front of the restaurant, and then when he went back to it, the council had opened up a massive bus depot opposite. And in summer, they like they would just get these kind of like huge clouds of diesel smoke swarm into the restaurant. And basically, he said to them, "You're fucked." You know, you just, you just, you just fucked. You're just in a terrible location. You just have to shut it down and open it somewhere else. Oh, it's got nothing to do with the location. Like they have been mired in this smog for so, so long. Oh, they're, they're so, like, so compact. And it's like <laughs> they were, they were suffering with carbon monoxide poisoning. They're like so much of their, you know, their brain mass was dying at that point. They had very little grasp of uh, of who they were and where they were, or English or anything. And then they set up a podcast. <laughs> and good night <laughs> I made steak tartare for Buzz Aldrin I didn't even cook it because I know he didn't go to no moon the liar 
And I didn't even come in it. That's how much of a professional I am. You say, hey, that's how you glue the beef together. You've, you've been working in restaurants a long time. Does pe- do people come in stuff? Um, you've never come across that, right? No. Do people do anything to the stuff? I don't, I've never seen people like tamper with, um, with food in, in such an egregious way, but I've Didn't worked we, with so many yeah. people with like so many issues with their like personal hygiene that I, when I would, when I started working in restaurants, I ate at restaurants so much less. You ever worked in a restaurant that had like rats or anything? Um, I've had, yeah, I've worked, but not, not rats, nothing extreme, as extreme as that, but definitely mice. And they, would they shut you down straight away if they found that? The people that inspect, um, EHO or whatever it is, they would say yes, but I, I think it'd be like a warning. Like, get it, yeah, get no, it it easy, it'd easily week. be a warning. It's like so many people would like get shut, you know, would would suffer from that immediately. Mm-hmm. I think, um, and with 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 a lot of what they inspect, there's a lot of like pretense and stuff like that. A lot of what they in, inspect is like labeling the foods and stuff like that. And we changed like labels every like two days and what have you. So we it's always saying that we we made something on this day and it's you know it's only good for this amount of time. And um, you know, like the people that are, are you know that check this stuff out, they know as much as you know as everyone else that it's, it's fucking bullshit. And we always say like everything's like for two days, but like a lot of food doesn't get sold in that time. And just because it's not sold in that time, it's not it doesn't erupt in like dangerous doesn't, doesn't pathogens rot. and yeah. mold. Yeah, I understand. Um, so we're kind of re- rehashing the labels and this, that, and the other. And a lot of what we yeah a lot of what we go through is just kind of um, it's it's all entirely a fucking facade. Like we got all this these due diligence papers and stuff like that, where where we're apparently like um, probing the temperatures of food as we go. Anything that we're like hot holding, we're saying that you know we're checking temperatures this that and the other, and we're never doing stuff like that. If like if we're working, we're not like taking time out every twenty minutes to like probe some meat and da 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 and see see if it's you know above board. And apart from anything else, like people are fucking fussy about what. The, what they eat and how they want to eat it. Some people like their shit fucking raw. Some people like it well done. And they want to say that like, everything. Do has you ever to, have like, people who come in and they're like, "Hi, uh, I understand how restaurants work, and I know that you know you're not going to throw things out after two days. So that's fine with me. I'm looking for things, so something that's uh, just a little bit, uh, you know, exquisitely on the turn." Do you ever get that? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I haven't had anyone quite quite so discerning. I wouldn't. I'm not quite sure what they 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 kind of looking for. Like they're looking for something you know, vegetable that's starting to ferment. Perhaps I think they kind of be. I think they're just better off getting getting a drink at that point. I am an alcoholic. I can't have a drink. But do you have any rotten vegetables? <laughs> if I could just breathe in the fumes for a while, I get dizzy but only for like five minutes. But you know, I, I I've I've, I've given myself a very specific set of rules um, for my lifestyle and I'm try- and, and they don't work out. My life is fucking miserable so I'm, I'm desperate to find a loophole and I think this is one of them. So you can just get you know, your, your slot bucket you know, um, where you throw your pans as you're working. If I, if I could just stick my head in that, if you just get a plastic bag, wrap it around the sides, just cut off the oxygen a little bit, I'd be, I'd be greatly appreciated. I'll pay handsomely for the experience. If you need me to kind of like, keep out of um, visual range of the other customers, I don't want to kind of impede on your business or anything like that, I'm more than happy to oblige. You'd be doing but, me a terribly great favour, old boy, because it's this, or otherwise I'll have to go to Thornton's and buy some chocolate liqueurs to shove up my ass. <laughs> I must I must warn you. That, pip, uh, pip, tell her. I wear very loose baggy trousers, and I am taking my belt off right now. If you will not, uh, if you not meet me in these demands, I am prepared to drop trousers right now and embarrass everybody right now. Yes, I, so yeah, I mean, this has happened. So how did you, do, yeah, have I told you about Jeremy? I must have done if you knew all this. Now it's just back to speculating what cum tastes like. There should be more jizz in this podcast. I think there's plenty jizz in this podcast. Not enough to fill a guitar with, not yet. Did we ever find that out? Into how much it would take to fucking fill up the average acoustic guitar. No, we have not done that, no. I don't think we decided, yeah, okay, yes, fill it up because we were going to lay it on its back. I remember that. <laughs> Do you th- okay, but I think that 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 is that's a marathon, right? And that's fine, you know. That definitely is uh, a worthy sort of sport and everything. But I think the real sport is in can you fill up a harmonica in one go? <laughs> well, it depends. Like if you've got your you kind of like standard like um, your standard like G tuning harmonica, they're quite small. But if I think that that I mean I think that 
for the average male is probably doable. But I think like like ex- expert mode, right? Not fucking baby mode harmonicas. Expert mode. It's like I mean, not baby mode. Those... Baby mode harmonicas that are like harmonicas you get out of one of those grabber games. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're plastic. You know? <laughs> they come in like novelty, novelty shapes and stuff like that. Shapes like what? Like a corn cob. Sometimes it's they're almost like fucking, fucking breakfast. What's it? The, 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 what we talked about earlier, the fucking breakfast. Uh, spoon yeah, that's right. Bit. You can you can get a harmonica in the shape of breakfast. <laughs> a bowl of cornflakes. You can get a harmonica in the shape of freedom. But anyway, yeah, expert mode. You know, I think you can easily like jizz all over a harmonica, fucking fill it right up, and make it entirely useless for the rest of its life. But if you if if someone really wants to go for it, you get those like the the kind of like Stevie Wonder chromatic ones that are like yeah you like, yeah Joe Rogan was... mode to get that, <laughs> and then it just it just burns up into fumes. <laughs> so what is like what what is Joe Rogan mode here? Like fucking blowing, blowing your load like a fucking fire hydrant. Is that what you're saying? You're saying he's incredibly virile male and he could easily destroy the Stevie Wonder harmonica. I think it just looks like a normal load, but it, it just gets everywhere. <laughs> it, it spreads. It just burns it through. It spreads, yeah, it spreads. <laughs> it's almost like, like fire foam or something. It's like, it's like alien blood. Yeah, no, if you get that on your face, you, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it will deprive you of oxygen. It's like that stuff that... The little alien, the little alien, the little dinosaur spits in Jurassic Park at Newman. Oh, right. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah, I, I remember. No, I was thinking like it's, it's something. It's, it's not necessarily a poison. It's just something that instantly solidifies. No, it's a, not, not a poison. It's just, it just gets everywhere and chokes you and everything. But yeah, like instantly, kind of seals itself to your face. You know, you can use it to make like death masks of people. It's like <laughs> it's just latex, essentially. It's a powerful epoxy. You know, if they if they were to kind of think a little bit uh, further out of the box, D- Damien, you know, that's how incredible. Australia built its bridges. <laughs> so maybe there you go. It has incredible in, uh, industrial applications there. Someone is fucking thinking outside the box. Good for them. A little fact for you. Look at a picture of Australia now. Here's a fact for you. Australia has no bridges. Anywhere. <laughs> Anywhere in Australia. Because look at it. It's just a big <clears throat> island. Where do they need a bridge to? Yeah, yeah. Forget about you know, the Sydney Harbour Bridge is a fucking lie. It's not a, har- it's not a bridge. It's, not a br- it's just part <laughs> of a harbour. It doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> it's just a floaty road. It's not a bridge. No, it doesn't. But it doesn't go anywhere. It's just... It's it's like those two swords in a wreck. It's just one of those things. It's just it's just a nice thing to say. Like, look, we've put some metal on our harbour. I've taken it for granted, you know, that it's a thing. But I've never been to Australia, so maybe it is essentially just a model that is just like carefully framed at this, you know, at the riverbanks. And like a perpetual it- lie, people are like, yeah, I've been on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's something that everyone is kind of complicit in as well. He's, he's like, all right, fine, all right. So it's not like when you visit America and you've got to kind of go through like all the, the visa things. It's like, all right, for ingress and egress, you have to uh, you have to be willing to participate in this lie. If you're not willing to do it, no, we will check up on you. The Grand Canyon is the cannot... same, though, because the Grand Canyon, you think it's big, then you read your, your fact sheet. When you find out that Joe Rogan once came over the Grand Canyon... <laughs> <laughs> this really is, you know, an effort to purge the listeners, isn't it? Yeah. So, all right. So, what happened? Was it just an in- you know, incredible shot, or did it was it like a constant stream? And like, once it hit the other side, he managed what? to like bind she, the Grand what, Canyon what, what, and like, inc- bring it together. An incredible shot. You mean like he came into the Grand Canyon, it fell onto no, 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 a, over, a, pr- over. a prospector's hat and <laughs> bounced off, and so it went through time as well. <laughs> no, they've got prospectors down there. It's so it's so deep, Damien. They haven't heard about the you know. If they knew that everything was happening that, that it is, they'd be like, "Oh gosh, the Kardashians on TV." I'm like, fuck the gold stuff I was doing. So yeah, I've, um, <clears throat> so what? Yeah, what was the last like? What was the last actual point? Was it Joe Rogan jizzing over the J- Grand Canyon? I think so the, la- what? the last actual point, I think it was. Me and Artemis Benedict gonna save Gordon Ramsay from a big metal spider. Um, I I remembered why I wrote down Menage a Trout. Oh, go on, spill. Uh, it's it, it's just because at the end of Wild Wild West, I was I seem to remember both Will Smith and Artemis Benedict get married to Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> I mean Selma Hayek, but don't they both get married to her? Isn't that how it ends? They both get married. I mean, that's 
That's interesting. Yeah, it's really weird because I think though I seem to remember like it they had this kind of like dodgy little twist where she's already married. And they're like, and they these guys because obviously she was billed as like you know the love interest. Like all, but for all, who? All throughout the movie, yeah, it was obviously this kind of love triangle, and it's it, it's comedic and this and the other. And it, it was just it, it, yeah, it was just a really bizarre turn in the movie, like where she kind of kind of comes clean. It's like she wasn't rescuing her father; she was rescuing her husband. Like so, Robert and, Klein, and her, her Robert husband's. Klein? Antonio Banderas, something like that, and they they just look at each other and they immediately say that that is not enough. And like, no, they, it's it's Calvin Klein, isn't it? Calvin Klein? Oh, yeah, yeah I'll, yeah, I'll just say yes. Yeah, and I'm sure that's entirely correct. They're like, we're not having that, and they immediately abduct her. Right? We don't see it in the movie. That was what they set up for the next movie. There was obviously oh, we're talking about the script that was leaked online, where they essentially, yeah, oh, she was forced into this kind of like. No, the script online where they, they were like, well, Salma Hayek is not going to come back and do it. But you know who would do it? This young, spunk-filled upstart, Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose at that time he, had, he wouldn't have uh, achieved his first kind of Michelin star, so I guess he was he would have been quite desperate to kind of make his mark. I guess that would have been it. I'm a badass chef with a motor mouth and chop-chop, yeah. Chink-clang. <laughs> chef sounds. Shop, yeah, shop, I mean, stir, I, I, stir, it sounds boiling. Like, it sounds like banter at this point, but what they don't realise is we're actually just dropping in clips from his audition tape. It's fucking flawless. Your impression is second to none. <laughs> it sounds like it sounds like banter at this point, but we both know it's mental illness. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Fucking hell, I forgot, forgot Kenneth Branagh is in there. I think Kenneth Branagh is trying to forget to... Kenneth Branagh's the best bit. He understood it was shit. Yeah, but I don't think he likes to measure it against everything else that he's done. I can't believe they had Ted Levine in there and they didn't have him as the bad guy called Buffalo Bill. I can't believe, yeah, he didn't kind of get his dick out and tuck it between his legs. I mean, that should have been the bulk of the movie. That, or, you know, he would just kind of, like, be haranguing Tony well, Shalhoub. So, yes, I was just about to yeah, say. Like, he's not a bad film, guy at all. The, film, like, the film should have been Ted Levine tucking his dick in between his legs and <laughs> cast... <laughs> Castigating Kevin Klein because Kevin Klein keeps cleaning crime scenes. <laughs> There's no That's Tony. Just what Shalib. he wants. <laughs> Tony Shalib is an Indian man, and we've worked it round, round to Frasier. Oh dear. Oh, of course. Yeah. Okay. It's Wild Wild. It's Wild Wild West. But Gordon Ramsay is Will Smith, and Frasier <laughs> is Kevin Klein. <laughs> And it's specifically Frasier. It's not Kelsey Grammer. It's Frasier. Yeah, it's yeah uh, naturally the character. Okay, so is so is Ramsey Ramsey, or is he assuming the character of Jim West as Will Smith? So he's kind of he's doing this kind of really half ass fucking impression. Not half ass. He's just he's like Ramsey is not an impressionist. He's kind of useless at it. But he's 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 really kind of like barreling. He's really barreling his way through there. What are we saying? Well, what's your question? So is Ramsey just being Ramsey, or is he trying to be Will Smith, being Jim West, where it is? I, I'm sorry, I don't know. I was distracted by Kevin Klein's sunglasses on the poster, um, which seem to be perfectly round, like the sunglasses Dracula wore in Bram Stoker's Dracula. You know, with Gary Oldman playing Dracula, and I, I was just thinking, what if, what if Gary Oldman took those sunglasses off in that ridiculous scene where he's wearing those perfectly round sunglasses, <laughs> and and his eyes were that exact shape. <laughs> I would say like his eyes were attached to the lenses, so as he's doing it, all you see is like the fucking stems of his eyeballs come out. So it immediately cuts, but before you know it cuts to black, you just hear Gary Oldman shrieking in fucking agony. It's like, how did this happen? Yeah, were, were they perfectly round or were they hexagons? No, they were perfectly round. I seem to remember, but they were just kind of tiny. It's almost like they rested entirely on the nose with the clip rather than the, like the standard kind of band around the ears. No, they weren't perfectly round. They were kind of overly. I'm looking oh, at yeah? them now. Yeah, and they were blue as well. Oh, man. Uh, it's, all that comes up is Gary Oldman with butt hair. Well, don't just and type Gary Oldman butt hair in then. <laughs> <laughs> How did you know? That's fucking spooky. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, yeah, they're kind of... Yeah, all right. So they're actually... I'm remembering them incorrectly, which is fucking surprising. Yeah, I don't remember them being that blue. Something other than fucking cum to take away from this fucking show. 37 episodes and we still haven't got anything other than cum. 
<laughs> I think we've been pretty sedate up to now, but as I say, you know, no pun intended, but we're fucking blowing a load since we're, you know, be off, we're going to be off for the next six weeks. I mean, this is all the cum you're going to need for six weeks. Uh, well, do you have anything else to say about Gordon Ramsay? I mean, do you have anything, like, any ideas for a film he could be in? <laughs> I didn't have anything before we started. I mean, I'm not going to have anything now. Well, let's talk about the fucking video game. It just seems to be like this really kind of boring, like, Flash game. Uh, it was something that came out. I would say like like fucking twelve years ago. It's really fucking remedial. It's like, that's not how I would kind of like design a game like that. If you're gonna have like a kitchen nightmares thing, and like, like the the appeal of this game is like as you're fucking up, like Ramsey is like fucking haranguing you as you go. It's, like, he's getting that? closer and closer to you. Yeah. So yeah. if you like, dispense with life. this fucking of like this click and drag, make a fucking dish thing, you know, against the fucking clock. Just have a thing where you're just kind of like trying to survive in this fucking restaurant, and like Ramsey is fucking pursuing you. But it's exactly like you know, um, Nemesis from Resident Evil Three. He's this unkillable fucking thing. You're just running from him constantly. It's just Papa the Rapper. You've just got to press the buttons at the right time, otherwise he gets nearer. But <laughs> the crucial difference is, is it doesn't tell you what buttons to press. <laughs> it's like Dance Dance Revolution. You've got people like fucking really going for it in the arcades. And you're not like given any kind of visual cues on, on screen. All you've got is like what starts off as Ramsey really far away on the screen. <laughs> Every time you seem to fuck up, you don't know what you're doing right. He just gets closer. So you're like frantically like fucking, you're throwing your feet around, pressing everything all at the fucking same time. Sometimes you do it right and he, he, like, he's knocked back a little bit. You're getting your distance and you feel fine. There's a little bit of relief, but you have no idea. He's just relentlessly fucking pursuing you. Every time there are, there, there are no levels. It's just how long can you survive? Every time it's a gay, game over, you get a different FMV. It's like it could be like him eating noodles out of your your kind of half decapitated head, where your brain would be. He's eating the noodles. It it could be like your dead body, and he's eating sushi off of it. It could be like he's mixing a big pot of stew, and there's there's your arm in it. It's it's always like he's eating you, though. That's exactly what that that that, that game should have been. It should have been that. Well, what did you say about Nemesis? Oh, it's no, it's thought, Resident yeah, Evil, but all you can do is craft herbs. <laughs> I think you could easily do like a palette swap, you know, of that game. And rather than have this big fucking hulking thing, right? It's, it's just Ramsey. And he's just, he just, he's just fucking screaming at you. And, and what would he be saying? <clears throat> and he's bland! Like, bland! He's just cunt! Cunt! It's not nuanced at all. It's there's no like, kind of flippant, you know, quips or anything. Oh yeah, no, it's a it, very it's, amateur it's, mod. It, it's just but... you are you are fucking shit. You are a shit chef. You are a disgrace. If you had <laughs> any fucking honor, you'd you'd have killed yourself fucking years ago. Yeah, yeah. So and it's like that. It's um. It's, it's not fun. It's really horrible. Yeah, so you're, as you're kind of navigating empty hallways, you're not quite sure it's safe. You just hear these those those exact moments just very quietly. It's like, but you know he's there. You're not quite sure where. And then around any corner, he's just m- appear out of fucking nowhere. And it's gonna, it's fucking terrifying. One of the weird things about Ramsey as well is he he doesn't swear in real life um, because because he's actually a Christian and they have to they have to edit all of those in. It's somebody else doing them doing the swearing oh it's not even his 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 own voice it's not even his own voice yeah he says all those those things it's just not his voice (laughs) this piccata doesn't have the right flavor i was gonna something i was gonna go with something that was it was much lower octave it's almost you know indecipherable (laughs) (laughs) like ramsey only communicates in clicks it's like Morse code is the only thing they can that they, the only thing they can kind of really <laughs> you know all of compare the, it to all of the photos. If you just type Gordon Ramsay into Google, all of the photos you get, it could be like the only way he can talk. He has it, you know, he's he absolutely normal intellect, but the only way he can communicate is by going uh, 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 and like once you're around him for a bit, like you understand what he what he means. <laughs> yeah, it's no, it's nowhere near as kind of offensive. It starts to make sense. I mean, you start like noticing patterns. It makes sense, but it's well, very difficult and very alienating at first. You can't put hell into the title of thing in G- things in Germany, whether it be a a video game, a book, or a film. So in Germany, the Hell's Kitchen, the game, game is called Mister Kitchen, the game. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, obviously it's called Hair Kitchen. Hair, <laughs> hair, hair, hair cooker, hair cock, hair cock. 
hairy cock. Be sure to sure. like cite all your you know your references in, in, your in the description below. <laughs> I want this validated. I want that to be the fucking truth. As you can see, Big Bay Burgers is only one of many shows you will star in on your journey to fame. Oh, man. How many people do you think live in Gordon Ramsay's face? Mm, well, I mean, I suppose there's a lot of fucking real estate there. Are we talking tiny people? In a, I mean, there's <laughs> definitely a lot, of, there's a lot of room for tiny people to hang off there. Right, but I always think when I flush my toilet, how many tiny people have I killed? <laughs> you know, in, the, in the kind of microscopic kind of crevices on the toilet bowl. Do you ever think that? Well, no, I kind of think that they're kind of like trying to... They're not microscopic, but they're kind of crawling up through the fucking U-Bend, and I've just kind of torpedoed yeah, them back down. I, th I think that as well. Sometimes, you know, if I'm going to bed, but I don't need to use the bathroom, I'll flush the toilet anyway to make sure Jack the Rat is sufficiently down the pipe. It's not going to be a problem until tomorrow morning. <laughs> Your mistake is naming them, because one day I, you will get soft. I can't think of U-Bend without thinking of... Um, Barbara Streisand, because I I associate Barbara Streisand now with with, shit. with chim with chimneys, because she's got so many chimneys. Oh, of course. So all, so the way I associate Barbara Streisand is I think Barbara Streisand right down her chimney, and I think right down her chimney, right up her U band. <laughs> I know that doesn't make sense. I don't have a point or anything. I'm just saying. Do you have any weird weird kind of you know associations like that? Like, I definitely fucking associate pineapple juice or, or whatever it is, pineapple Alphonse, with disgusting taste now. Because <laughs> of all those seeds we used to eat. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't pineapple, it was, it was orange and mango. And, yeah, orange was... and mango Alphonse. That's why I fucking hate the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air as well. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, that, that 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 homophonic uh, homophonic uh, relationship there that that, that that means I am like now duty bound to castigate fucking Alfonso Ribeiro. That's right. I, well, and he's a bit of a fucking prick, isn't he? I'm sure he is. Yeah. Yeah. I've got nothing. I'm not, I'm not basing this on anything. I've never seen the guy in interview. Well, he played. I haven't Carlton. watched the fucking. I haven't watched the Fresh Prince. And... He must be a prick. The better part of a decade. He but played yeah, Carlton. He must be. Yeah, he must be. He'd have been better in Wild Wild West. <laughs> I think oh that's where we. That's what they should have done. That would have. That would have been a killer. Wild Wild West. Will Smith as Jim West. <laughs> <laughs> Alphonse Ribeira as, as Will Smith. As Will Smith. I was just going to say as Carlton Banks. <laughs> and it's just all it is is 20 minutes at the beginning of Alfonso Riviera going I used to have a cousin like you in the future which I'm from and of course Robert Klein who is Frasier turns and, up and, and all they do for the next 40 minutes is just stare at each other with the most horrific intent there is <laughs> a single version <laughs> and then they there's fight. no dialogue like they, like they they kind of like Switch out the uh, the shot every like ten minutes, and then every time that, they do it, it's, it's always way too fucking late. But they just look at each other, and they like they look at each other in this three way Mexican standoff. And you know, they we've heard the song about they've got to save Gordon Ramsay from a big metal spider, but no one knows how they're going to do that or anything. No one's even seen the spider. It's just these three people: Will Smith, Alfonso Ribeira, and Kevin Klein playing Frasier. <laughs> Looking at each other, and everyone's like, "Oh, what's this? This is this is weird. This is Wild Wild West, is it? Oh, this is slightly erotic, isn't it?" And then it it just it's a very very slow zoom out from quite close where we can see them all, still a long shot to a massive sweeping landscape in which they're a tiny part of it. It's you know it's it's Leone like, and it zooms out, and then burning through the celluloid, we get the title "Natural Harvest," the movie. <laughs> And then it's all just. Then, you know, then you've got su you, you got the subtitle "Scrambled Eggs." There we go. You know, yeah, and and people are like they're like, yeah, they called it Natural Harvest in America, but in France, how was it going to play in China? In France, they <laughs> called it by its real name, "Fratage the Movie." I think that that's an adequate exploration. Excellent stuff. Yeah, and then then there's nothing weird happens. They just have sex. All hmm. movie. <laughs> No, it's only in the last twenty seconds. That's when they kind of cut to credits. It's just like it's it's, it's like the better part of ninety minutes. I'm just the three, like Fraser, like Carlton and Will Smith, kind of look back and forth, kind of going, "What's going on here?" But Fraser locks eyes with Carlton and does not fucking budge. 
It takes a long time. It's over the course of like 45 minutes that you can like start to see that his breathing is getting more and more intense. Like it's angry breathing, right? Yeah, it, it's kind of, it's almost, it's kind of nondescript at first, but by the end of the mo movie, it's fucking furious. Maybe Fraser and Niles set up a restaurant at the Adam Sandler's house and Tim Allen uh, is, is the handyman and he doesn't know what he's doing because it's Tim Allen. <laughs> That's funny. And uh, that other guy we talk about sometimes is there as well on some pretext. And uh, and Gordon Ramsay has to come and, and sort everything out. No, not at all. No, St Tim Allen is still in orbit. <laughs> right. At this point. Okay. Same universe. Tim Allen is slowly growing. So yeah, no, he's a celestial body at this point. They're setting up a restaurant and Gordon Ramsay's talking to them and he's saying, I mean, do you care about this restaurant? Do you actually care? I mean, you know, as much as you can given the circumstances. They're, they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We absolutely, Gordon, we care about this restaurant more than anything. We care about this restaurant more than anything given the circumstances. And everything they say, they say given the circumstances at the end. And you've no idea what the fuck is going on until like there's a news report in the background of a scene 45 minutes in. And yeah, Go um, Tim Allen is in orbit. And, and people have got to the point now where they realise the whole universe is going to be consumed by Tim Allen in a decade or two. And all they can do is, is live as they have been living and try to live normal lives. But they know that eventually he will just, not just block out the sun, but consume everything. Well, it's, right, okay, so, yeah. it's just like they're living under this. The story isn't about that. It's just the backdrop. I've been watching Frasier for years, and I know that if any restaurant in Seattle has spunk in it, it's this one. <laughs> I mean, it's never really said, but I think it is implied in Frasier that he masturbates a lot. They're very emphatic on just how single he is for, like, long <laughs> stretches of time. There's, there's no way that he's not, you know, loving himself in, you know, in between. And furiously, well, I imagine. He was a neurotic man. Well, yeah, but I thought that, you know, it was, it was kind of more implied than that. I thought it was like, so, uh, Frasier, you've got a new... Radio show, show today, that's three hours and, uh, you know, a couple of hours for prep. What are you going to do for the rest of the day? Oh, no, uh, the rest of my day is uh, is dedicated to, uh, well, more carnal tastes. <laughs> it's nowhere near as on the nose as that. Like, someone asked him the question, <laughs> it, just cuts to, it just cuts to Martin in his bedroom, like, with his, with his, with, with his <laughs> fingers in his ears, kid. just, like, like fucking crying. Not like not bawling, just it's a gentle tear, and it's like I can't believe that this is what my life is now. <laughs> Frasier's favorite way to masturbate is to run all over the apartment naked, <laughs> <laughs> stopping every few seconds, giving it a tug, running around. Oh, he's, he's, he's not mad. necessarily There's like shit tugging on the it. He's it's just everywhere. Kind of, he's just kind of like slapping it left to right as he's running around. <laughs> but we never see that bit. <laughs> it's just implied. We can see it in Martin's eyes. Yeah, so where's Daphne in all of this? It never happens when Daphne's there. It's always like, Daphne, will you go to the store for a couple of hours for me? And she's like, yeah, yeah, No, no, we'll. no, 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 it's yeah. nothing like that at all. Daphne is paid for her silence. Right, okay. She gives, that, she gives the old man a 20-minute massage a day. That's all she does. 35 grand a year just for, the, just for that, just for the massage for 20 minutes a day and for utter silence. Never mention Frasier's peculiar sex life. You see, you simply carry on as he would, you know, keeping the house, dusting down. It's fine. You don't look at me. You don't make any eye contact. Oh, Dr. Crane, I think it's wonderful that there's radio personalities that are, are out and gay. Oh, gay? I'm not gay. What I have is a romantic abnormality that must be kept from the public at all costs. <laughs> I wish. And then he starts running around me. <laughs> It's not even. It's not even that it's kind of not, like bizarre. It's not even sexual, I, I guess. Even. Yeah. It's. It's just. It's just. I, I, as perversions go, it's not that dark. It's just. It's the execution is just. Yeah. In and of itself, is kind of disturbing. He's not really hurting anyone. Just kind of, you know. It's very self-contained. Yeah. Himself with you know the occasional back twinge and he's not making. He's not hurting anyone. He's just making. His apartment, a very uncomfortable place to be at all times. <laughs> oh, Frasier. Um, one thing I wanted to say before we do go about Gordon Ramsay is I've watched all of the um, Kitchen Nightmare stuff. And in, in the US ones and later in the US ones, they kind of put more pretense on, I'm driving around in my new Bronco to visit <laughs> all these 
restaurants and all of this. And it's always like he's driving into town. He sees the restaurant and he's like, oh, that doesn't look good. And you know he's he knows exactly what the restaurant is. He's seen photos of it. Mm-hmm. There's been a briefing. He's probably been a pretty important part in decision making. And he's decided to go to the restaurant, I'm sure. I'm sure no one says to Gordon Ramsay, we're doing this. Let's I'm just sure, stop off here. I'm sure it's much more like, what do you think about this, Gordon? But he, he drives up and everything. And I just like the the idea that this just happens to be a TV show. If there wasn't a TV show, he'd still be doing this. He's been doing this for years before anyone started to film him. He's just been driving around to random people's restaurants, uninvited, telling them what they're doing wrong, and telling them, like, oh, and by the way, all this decor, gone. Shit. Crap. They only document the restaurants, but he does that with everything down the fucking high street. Every kind yeah, of- he, he can't buy anything without assessing it and demolishing it. Um, but I did want to say thank you to everyone who's listened, because I enjoy it. Thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I mean, I, I, mean I, I thought that was that, that, that was a lovely sentiment until you sounded so reluctant when you were saying thank you. <laughs> I guess I enjoy this, so thank no, you. No, I mean, I do enjoy it, but, uh, you know, sorry I enjoy it. Sorry okay. I enjoy being this stupid, I guess is what I'm saying. So, yeah, uh, thanks very much, and uh, see you on the 17th of August. All right, let's stop recording. Okay, cool. Goodbye. Yeah, bye. Da, da, da.